So Dobbin bred is a tactic that can create a bit of confusion with anglers. Uh, it's one of them methods that people tend to think that if they're not catching on it, they're actually doing something wrong. But I think a lot of the time, it's about drawing on shoals of fish and they're quite easy to catch. So in this video, I'm gonna run through the Dobbin rig what I use. It's a really, really simple rig and there's nothing fancy about it. And I'm just gonna run you through each of the little components that you need. So firstly, starting with the float, I've experimented over the years with different floats for bread I'm, I, and I tend to find that like a nice little light float but also a float that's got quite a thick bristle tends to work best. So this is a Richie Wilson Flexi Dink but it's with the thicker bristle, the 1.7 mil bristle and that just means that when you're suspending bread you can then use sort of like 6 mil all the way up to 12 mil punch if you want to and that tip won't be altered too much, it's not going to sink. And it just helps to suspend the bait because I think as well when bread soaks up and it fills with water, it actually becomes quite a heavy bait. So it's important you've got a decent fit bristle. Obviously, it's got that flexi wire stem, so it's nice and stable. Just stops your rig from skimming through. It's just got a nice slim body. And like I say, it's a 4 by 10 so nice light rig for when you're fishing obviously off the bottom with bread. So main line wise, I'm using 015 N-Gage. I've already put it onto me rig mate here. If I was going to a venue that was a mixture of F1s and carp, that's the main line that I use. If I was going to a venue where you dob in lots of carp and maybe some bigger carp, I'd probably step it up to 017 just so your rig's a little bit more durable. And often I find that you're dobbing in and amongst like features. So having a nice durable main line is very important in case it rubs around a pallet, through reeds or anything like that. So like I say, 015 main line. I'm just gonna put the float onto the line so I'm just going to put three pieces of silicon on and I'm using the Guru Micro Silicon 0.3, just a nice silicon for this. I tend to use that on all my sort of lighter floats and thinner float stems. I'm just going to put three pieces on, two shorter and one slightly longer. Cut the end of the line so we've got a nice clean bit of line to thread me silicon on. Put them three on. And all I do, nearly drop that piece then, all I do is put my first piece just a few mil below the float, maybe say 10 mil below the float. That just stops the line digging into the float. Slide that up so that it's, like I say, just sort of maybe like 8 to 10 mil below the float there. Again, the middle rubber goes roughly halfway down the float. And then the bottom rubber, and this is really important, especially with bread, because often I find that, you, you know, you're shipping that decent distances across to the island. If you don't leave this bottom rubber overhanging, you tend to get out there and your rig's tangled and your bread comes off and stuff like that and you have a bit of a nightmare every day. Make sure that rubber's overhanging nicely like that. So that's nicely secured onto the line. And I'm just gonna attach it to the rig, mate. I'm gonna tie a loop in the bottom of my rig using my census loop tire. Something I wouldn't be without when I'm tying rigs. Just creates a nice uniform loop every time. Pull that tight. And then just trim the tag end off nice and tight to the knot. Attach it onto the pin on the rig, mate. And just tighten everything into position. Now the nice thing about these rig mates is I can mark my shotting patterns on using one of these rig strips and the actual shotting pattern I use for bread is similar shotting pattern to what I use for most of my fishing to be fair. I like to keep everything nice and simple and I just find a bulk and two droppers work perfectly for bread. Sometimes when I'm fishing quite shallow, so if I'm fishing less than two foot, 
deep. I might have the bulk underneath the float with bread and two shot down the line. But I find when I'm going a little bit deeper, sometimes when I'm going to places like Partridge, you catch fish in actually in the track or in open water dobbing. And you can catch them quite deep, three to four foot deep at times. And I actually prefer just a bulk around 34 centimetres from the loop two droppers which is very similar to the shotting pattern i use for maggots on the bottom and stuff like that now i'm just going to mark that shotting pattern on with a permanent marker so i'll mark where my bolt's going to go and where my dro middle dropper's going to go so that's now set out i've got my bulk at 34 centimeters my middle dropper that's at 16 centimeters and then obviously my other dropper is going to be above the hook length loop so to attach that hook length loop on, uh, the shot above the hook length loop, sorry, I just need, need to take the pin off. And the bottom drop is gonna be a number 12. Now, when you're fishing off the bottom, you can actually get away with quite a small dropper and it's still gonna register a really positive bite because obviously the bait's suspended. When they take the bait, you often get a very, very positive bite. So by having a little number 12 as a dropper, just gonna create an ultimate slow fall and help catch a few fish that can watch the bait fall in clear water and I think that works really well with bread a real small drop of shot so number 12 it's just a Balabit Benny lead shot again I tend to with this shot in pattern I tend to just leave it in position so I don't tend to worry about um using like cubes or anything like that it tend to be I put the shot on and that's where it's going to stay so Another number 12 dropper. And then, just through trial and error with this float, I've worked out that with a piece of bread on and two number 12 droppers, it then takes three number 10s in a bulk to sit the float correctly. So I'm just going to put three number 10 shot in a bulk. I like quite a small little bulk when I do this. Instead of maybe like, more number 11s or more number 12s i just find that three number 10s just seems to not tangle as often it just seems to sit quite nicely it just seems to work very well just having a little bulk of just sort of three or four shot so three number 10s drop that one Last number 10. So it's a really, really simple rig. There, there isn't any need to, you know, just because you're fishing bread, use a real different shotting pattern or change anything. I mean, nice, simple, bulk and two droppers shotting pattern works really well. But the most important thing is them two little number 12 droppers just for that real slow fall of the bread in the final little bit of the water. So that's the shotting pattern completed. And that's basically the bread rig completed. And like I say, it's very, very simple. It's a nice rig to use through the winter. So going to attach the rig to the winder and I always make all my rigs up to a full length of a die with match top kit so it's about seven and a half foot long and it works out at roughly 14 lengths of the winder so I'm just going to wrap it around the winder so that's two loosen this right off on the rig mate five Ten, twelve, fourteen. Just measure my line up to the end of the winder. Tie a nice big loop in the end so that I can attach it over the winder. Trim the tag end. And that's the finished bread rig. Dead simple. Like I say, two number 12 droppers, little bulk, perfect, nice visible bristle, and a float that shouldn't drift about with a nice wire stem. Perfect rig for bread. Now, in terms of hook lengths and hook length diameters and what I'm going to use to attach to that, I always put my hook lengths on on the bank, especially with bread as well, because I might be going to a venue where I'm fishing for lots of small F1s, or I could be going to a venue where I'm fishing for big £10 carp on bread. So I'll, I do use a bit of a variety of hook lengths. So... Normally, if I'm going fishing for F1s, places like Partridge, Tunnel Barn, places like that, 011 N gauge is absolutely perfect. 
and that's matched with the F1 pellet hooks from Guru. Usually a size 16 is perfect for bread. That's just a nice balanced setup. Normally with elastics like pink hydro, blue hydro, that's perfect for F1s. When I'm fishing for bigger carp, I tend to scale up a little bit. Even in winter, I'm happily will use sort of 013 or even 015 hook length if you're fishing for big carp. So again, 013 engage and the slightly heavier hook, Super LWG, size 16, if I'm fishing for big carp. Hook length length, I normally just use a 5 inch hook length. Nice long, you know, longish hook length gives a little bit slower fall of the bait and it just works perfectly. And that's basically a nice simple bread rig for winter. So I've actually marked the, the shotting pattern that I've used on this RigMate Pro on one of the rig strips. So you'll be able to see it at the end of the video so you can copy it for yourself, the exact shotting pattern what I'm using.